Hey guys, I'm Richard Neowin, and today we're unboxing the Acer Swift 5. Um, so I've reviewed a few of these, obviously, um, but but this is the, the, the latest Swift 5. It's the SF514-55TA model. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, I, I, the Swift series is always uh, fantastic. Um, there hasn't been a Swift 7 in a couple of years, which is a little weird. That was the one that's super thin and light, comes in under 2 pounds, but also has an Intel Y series processor. And uh, Ice Lake Y, I don't believe it ever shipped. Um, so maybe we'll see one of those with Tiger Lake later this year. But this is the Swift 5, and this one comes in at about two, two and a third pounds. So, so that's still super light. Comes with a magnesium chassis, obviously. That's, you need to be magnesium to get to that weight. That's how it is. Um, or carbon fiber, something like that. Um, so Acer sent this to me. They said, it's a really nice high-end Ultrabook. And really, it was all capitalized. And I was like, whoa, whoa, I'm in. I am in. So, um, so it's actually pretty cool. Just going off like the list that that um, that they sent me. This unit costs twelve ninety nine ninety nine, which is not expensive at all for a premium notebook. And now here's what's interesting about it. It's got eleventh gen processors, a Core i seven eleven sixty five G seven, um, which is the top end Tiger Lake U processor, right? Um, Sixteen gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. That is super impressive at this price point. It has a 1080p 16 by nine display, 14 inches. Um, and it's got Thunderbolt four ports, which is awesome considering I'm working on a project about Intel Evo and, and um, Apple's M1 MacBook Pro. So if you've checked out those videos as well, um, I might incorporate this into the story as well, just because why not? Uh, we'll be testing out things like a, like an external GPU, um, a Samsung SSD, a bunch of peripherals that really generally work with the Windows ecosystem and don't work with the new M1 chip on the Mac. So let's get this open. Um, all right, this box is a little complicated. It's been taped over clearly a few times now. <laughs> But that's okay. Um, oh, super light. I, I love uh, all of Acer's Swift laptops are super, super light. Um, so, yeah. Oh, I love it so much. Oh, and I'll get to why in just a second. Because um, let's get everything out of the box first. Uh, a little bit of paperwork here. Shipping return label. Let's put this nicely back in here. And we've got our... Uh-oh. Uh uh-oh. A power brick. This is a uh, 65 what? No, yeah, 65 watts. But it's a pin charger. That's upsetting. That's upsetting. Uh, but uh, I, 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 as long as I can charge through the the USB Type C port, that's okay. Um, we're putting that charger back in the box, hoping that I never have to look at it again. Looking at the spec sheet. We're good. Uh, USB Type-C port supporting USB 3.2 Gen 2, up to 10 gigabits per second. Display port over USB-C, Thunderbolt 4, and DC in port 20 volts, 65 watts. Um, I love this color combination. Uh, <laughs> that's why I kind of, I kind of got excited about it when I saw it. The color itself is called mist green, and it's it's lovely, right? But it's also pull this out of here but it's also got gold accents along the sides which i quite like so here we have it like like in general I'm, I'm just a fan of the green and gold color combination um the last swift 5 that i got my hands on it was a blue and gold combination and uh, i think I, I think i like the green and gold even more but i really praised acer and i'll praise them again for taking a magnesium laptop and making it look sexy it's a rare thing a lot of magnesium laptops the, while being super light and super functional they come in this sort of uh, bland gunmetal gray color and uh, it's really nice to see someone doing something that's not that okay like like you see you got the the gold hinge it's not um like a, a chrome type of gold, like we see in the Acer logo. By the way, the branding is always the sexiest part of the laptop, and that's for obvious reasons, right? Um, the gold hinge with uh, Swift branding on the back, okay? We got ports. You can see that right here. Um, 
USB uh, 3.2, uh, I don't know, Type A. Uh, I don't know what generation it is. Okay, I just double checked. It is, in fact, Gen 1, which means you get 5 gigabits per second data transfer speeds. Unfortunately, uh, there are other laptops using Gen 2, which is 10 gigabits per second, so that's kind of a shame. 3.5 millimeter audio. This side, we've got Thunderbolt 4, um, which we can use for charging. And then there's another DC port uh, HDMI. And that HDMI is 2.0, so you can plug it into a 4K display without uh, issue or sacrificing on your refresh rate. Um, and then, of course, there's another Type A port, which is 3.2 Gen 1. By the way, 3.2 Gen 1 is also known as 3.1 Gen 1, and that's also known as 3. Uh, it was just rebranded over the years. It, nothing has changed. So now they now they had then they had a USB 3.1 Gen 2 for 10 gigabits per second, and that was rebranded to USB 3.2 Gen 2. And now there's USB 3.2 uh, two by two or two x two or whatever it's called, and that's going to be uh, twenty gigabits per second. So yeah, it's confusing. And then USB four is going to be forty gigabits per second. I wonder if you'll ever even see two by two ship because USB four should be coming. It does have a touch screen? Like I said, ten eighty p. It's a very, very pretty device. Uh, it is sixteen by nine. Um, if that's you know something that you don't want because like i mean i personally like 16 by 9 i like the wider screens versus taller screens because i like to work in split screen so um it makes it feel a little more normal to me when i have the a wider screen uh some people prefer that taller screen and don't worry those are out there 16 by 10 and 3 by 2 are becoming very 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 popular over the last year or so okay um the keyboard is pretty much standard uh Acer stuff, um, they're chiclet style keys. Um, you know, I've seen that, I feel like I've seen this keyboard a thousand times before, not much has changed since the last time I reviewed a Swift 5. Um, and then we have the uh, fingerprint sensor over there. Okay, now um, this is Intel Evo certified. So what does is, what is Evo certified mean? It used to be called Project Athena uh, with the 10th generation. Now it's 11th generation, it's got a name, it's called Evo. And Evo means that you're going to see um, great battery life, uh, instant on connectivity. So when, when you wake it up, it just wakes up. That's part of being Evo, um, you know, thin and light stuff. So it, it's it, what used to be called just like the Ultrabook program that became uh, Project Athena, that became Evo. And Intel has uh, just been adding stuff to that throughout the last few years for what it means to be a premium thin and light modern PC. So there's a couple things about uh, Intel Tiger Lake, which is the code name for 11th gen processors. It's really, really impressive. I've reviewed many PCs now with 11th gen processors and it's good. Um, one of the things that's new, it's a second generation 10 nanometer process. The first one was Ice Lake and Ice Lake was a weird thing because um, they like there was Ice Lake U, which had the U series processors for most laptops, but they also had Comet Lake U because honestly uh, they couldn't make enough and they couldn't make them good enough. Um, so Comet Lake U was using that same old 14 nanometer process that Intel had been using since sixth gen or uh, maybe fifth gen. I don't even know, uh, but but it's been a very very long time since they, since you know they switched to 14 nanometers. So. They had these two going side by side, and Ice Lake, it was just Ice Lake U and Ice Lake Y, and they also had Comet Lake U and Comet Lake Y side by side. And then for 8 Series, Desktop, all that stuff, it was just Comet Lake. So um, the CPU wasn't quite as powerful as the as the 14 nanometer Comet Lake, which they've been working on for years. So they, they focused a lot on integrated graphics with Iris Plus. It was very impressive, very impressive graphics and I, Ice Lake it really impressed me to that level. Because like, you get a certain amount of graphics power out of integrated graphics I never expected to see before. Like stuff that I would typically need uh, dedicated graphics for. So now we have Tiger Lake. Tiger Lake is more impressive. Iris XE graphics. They took those integrated graphics to the next level again. And it's good. Okay, so on top of Iris XE, you get Thunderbolt 4, faster memory, um, and that CPU is better. So we're not seeing a 14 nanometer alternative this time. Um, for the H series, right now, we're not seeing a 14 Because 
what they, what Intel did is they put out H35. So it's a 35 watt H series. Usually it's 45 watt, and I I bet they can't get up to 45 watt with 10 nanometers just yet. So they're gonna probably put out a 14 nanometer one. Desktop's gonna be 14 nanometer for this generation, but we're really seeing 10 nanometer expand. And then of course we have that Iris XC graphics. So I've reviewed a few, and it's really impressive. Like you could do uh, full HD gaming some video editing and stuff like that. Stuff that really, really would have felt that I would need dedicated graphics for before. And it's really surprising to feel like I can actually do this stuff comfortably um, in such in a PC with such a small footprint. You know, like something like this, you would not expect, so you would not expect a two, two and a third pound, or I should say 2.31 pounds, because it's even a little less than two and a third, right? Um, you would not expect that to be able to um, play, you know, games like Forza Horizon 4 or Halo, Master Chief Collection, stuff like those are the game, the, my go-to games that I just play over and over and over again. But um, other games too, obviously, at, at full HD and do well. You, you don't expect that from something that weighs so little, but you can do it. It's It's impressive. It's really cool to see Intel finally taking graphics power seriously. So, uh, anyway, guys, I'll have a review on this in a couple of weeks. I'm excited about it because I'm, I'm kind of smitten with it already. So, stay tuned. I'm Richard Neowin. Have a great night.